For a long time, there was little information about ancient and medieval history. Farmers and builders who occasionally found ancient artifacts started to create various legends about them. Due to this, ancient history was always associated with speculations and myth. However, the situation has dramatically changed due to new scientific breakthroughs and discoveries. As a scientific discipline, archaeology stands out among other studies. It includes many disciplines combining completely different spheres and exact sciences, such as anthropology and cultural studies, chemistry, geology and metallurgy, covering a broad range of research and studies of modern civilization. We invite famous Kazakh archaeologists to our Beyond Time TV program who will tell us more about the latest developments in archaeology and share the history of the amazing historical discoveries. These studies have contributed to the ancient history timeline. For thousands of years, Eurasia played an important role in the formation of tribes and cultures on its area due to its geographical position and climatic conditions. Kazakhstan is rich in mineral resources and the country ranks among the world's leading countries in its natural reserves. At the same time, Kazakhstan is known to have the rich historical and archaeological heritage with artifacts from the Paleolithic era to modern times. We will join the archaeological teams that are looking for new discoveries that demonstrate the whole picture of the world. A series of sensational archaeological discoveries were made on the territory of the Berel Valley in the East Kazakhstan region starting from the 90s. These discoveries became the country's major breakthrough archaeological findings. The burial mounds of the Saka tribes and golden decoration of their leaders and horses revealed were real sensation. The scientists found the grave of a young Saka king in the Isik Kurgan and attire covered with golden pieces. He was named the Golden Man. It became obvious that the Golden Man is not the only one. He was a representative of a large tribe who lived on the territory of the Great Steppe two to three thousand years ago. For 20 years, the artifacts in the Saka animal style were on display in local museums. The artifacts helped to study more about the life of the tribe whom Herodotus described as the Arimaspi people. However, who were these people? The findings at the burial mound revealed the ceremonial side of their life, rituals and worldviews. How did they live? How did they get food? How did they make their magnificent jewellery items? And the main question, how did nomads fight for survival? Or did they belong to a sedentary culture? Only the artifacts and its study can give the answers. In 2019, an archaeological camp was launched on the slopes of the Akbaur Hill, which is located 35 kilometers from Woskimen. The place that attracts thousands of pilgrims and tourists was included in the sacred map of Kazakhstan. This place is known far beyond its borders. Now it has become a scientific destination. The archaeological team is headed by Professor Zainola Samashev, who first began the study of the Saka tribes. Zainola Samashev is a prominent scientist, doctor of historical sciences. His works are known for all experts who study the history of Kazakhstan today. He conducted researches in every region of our country, and it is absolutely incredible that one of his major discoveries was made at the place where he was born in 1947. <laughs> I was born in the ancestral village. Our family herded lambs there. I remember one day someone showed me this place when I was four years old. Local people called the Akbaur cave that has inscriptions, petroglyphs, the legacy of the Kalmyk people. It was something unknown to their culture. They herded the lambs next to the archaeological monument, which scientists began to study only in the 60s. The first statue was in the Altai Manjolo. 
The first article was published by Altai Amanjolov, the famous philologist from East Kazakhstan. He wrote an article about this monument in 1965. It was an interesting monument in terms of the origins of the writing. It was necessary to study the meaning of these symbols. He described the graphic symbols. He is a philologist and a Turkologist. He deciphered the ancient Turkic letters. That's why the article was interesting from his point of view. Well, basically, his idea is correct. This is a pictogram, and there are symbols that have their own meaning, and they are encoded in them. Ten years later, the young scientist Samashev was interested in inscriptions on the cave and wrote a scientific work. Actually, the career of the world-famous archaeologist has started with the study of the inscriptions and petroglyphs on the rocks around the native village of Besterek. There were many houses when I was a child. The buildings were located according to the farmstead principle. Five to six houses, two to three houses were built in a row. The houses were scattered over this location. The most important thing is that they tried to live close to the water source for livestock and drinking water. For thousands of years, nothing has changed, especially in cattle breeding. People only had different ways of going from one place to another for living. It's not difficult to imagine how those people lived. Those people lived at the foot of the Akbaur Hill. Of course, we cannot compare the life of farmers who lived there 3,000 years ago and farmers who reside in the Ulan district of the East Kazakhstan region. Once, Samashev studied thoroughly the rock paintings of these places and did not plan to continue his studies until the great archaeological discovery was made. This is the Department of the East Kazakhstan Regional Architectural and Ethnographic Natural Landscape Museum Reserve at the Akbaur, the historical and archaeological complex. Two years ago, tourists visited these cave stones, surrounded by mysteries and legends. Now we see the location of the major excavation site. The place was named Kazakhstan Stonehenge and the Stone Age Observatory. Daniel Akhmetov, governor of the East Kazakhstan region, noticed that the stones evoke a booming sound under the feet, as if there was something inside the cave. About three years ago, governor of East Kazakhstan region called me and said that he heard a noise when he walked around the cave. He was interested in what it was. He told me to check this site. I said, OK, I will come in the summer and figure it out. Daniel Akhmetov initiated the program for the development of scientific research in the field of archaeology in the region several years ago. Within the framework of the program, the historical objects of the region are systematically studied by the best local and foreign scientists. Thus, the Akbaur was included in the research map along with Berel and Yeleke Saza. The work has begun. The landscape has significantly changed just in two years. Let's start from here. You can take a few pictures. Initially, archaeologists found out that they had numerous objects that were not identified according to the cultural and chronological plan. Based on the governess's instructions, they chose the major site and began the excavation according to the generally accepted method of field research in the settlements. 
Ахметов звучал вот мне. Вот этот, вот этот. Видишь, это складчатый мне, Манадирдин. Это уже не, 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 не... Yes, this is it. Look, this rock doesn't resonate anymore as the top layer was removed. Rocks resonate and make sound. People thought that there was something in here. Yes, then they started to think that this is a cult place and other myth. Then they explained this sound related to the astronomical observational objects. In fact, I lived behind this hill in a village now called Sagir, before it was called Leninka. I visited this place very often with students and without them. I studied and copied articles. The rock didn't resonate this time. In 1972, in Soviet times, the regiment of soldiers came to assist during the harvest campaign. In Soviet era, the army units are usually sent to the harvest. They have established their camp here, and they brought these stones to protect from wind. Они вот здесь установили э, свой лагерь, это самый палаточный городок, и вот это, эти камни привезли и установили. А эти... Да, 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 да. Yes, they had different equipment, and it was not difficult to find and bring these stones. Then people who have a rich imagination and obsessed with outer space activities, they assumed that these stones appeared in the Bronze Age. Пространство и прочее на звездное небо, они предположили, что это еще в те времена, в Бронзовом веке, установили спиростанцию. When did you get the idea that there might be a settlement here? У меня никаких мыслей до, до того, как сказал Аким области. I never thought about it before governor of the region Daniel Akhmetov told me to study this place. But I believe that stones located near the cave form some kind of scheme. I thought that should be a settlement, and I thought it was an Enolithic settlement. Since I dated this monument to the Enolithic era, this is the era of the Paleo-Metal of the Early Bronze Age, the Copper and Copper Stone Age. I thought, okay, someday I'll study that settlement, and then I'll analyze these materials. But science is full of surprises. Science knows it all. Initial research was incredible as all those years there were ancient settlements under the earth. After removing the first layer of soil, the outlines of a round structure with many fragments of ceramic vessels and bone remains of various animals appeared. Я, когда увидел первые безорнаментные вот эти фрагменты керамики, я безмерно обрадовался, потому что это... I was immensely excited when I saw the first non-ornamental fragments of these ceramics, as it is a settlement of early Saka time. This is an actual problem of archaeology in Kazakhstan due to lifestyle, economy, social structure of the Saka people, who are perceived by different scientific schools in different ways. It is widespread to attribute to them a nomadic way of life. Это просто перманентно вот это самое кочевническое образ жизни. Если это так, как они создавали вот эти шедевры, и тут, тут просто люди дальше не могли идти логическим своим мышлением, как вот это. If so, how did they create these masterpieces? They couldn't create such masterpieces in nomadic lifestyle. This society was different. There were herders and pastoralists, warriors, priests, generals, and everyone else. There was a sedentary part of society who dealt with metallurgy and mining. Unfortunately, all archaeology, including world archaeology and Eurasian archaeology, is based on findings originating from burial structures. This is a one-sided development. It's wrong. Moreover, this does not characterize other aspects of human life at that time. Therefore, we are fed up with these gold 
old products, mound archaeology, mound architecture, funeral rites, and etc. And now we can see a completely new direction. It turns out that the Akbaur complex also includes a monument of a transitional period from the Bronze Age to the Early Iron Age or to the Early Saka Age. According to preliminary estimates, the age of the settlement is 10 to 8 centuries BC. The landscape has little changed since that time and we can say that the ancient tribe had chosen a comfortable area to live, protected from the wind with thick grass and an abundance of water sources. But what can an ancient tribe tell us about itself? With the help of archaeologists who are translators from the language of the remnants of material culture. So, Mr. Yeldos. What is there? Who? Look, this is special hole. Here process, here unfinished. Here they began to do something and did not complete it. Yeldos Kariev is the head of the Akbaur Archaeological Detachment, senior researcher at the Altai Tanu Research Center of the Amanjol of East Kazakhstan State University. One of the things that is founded frequently is a hole. However, this type of form looks like a hand chopper, dressing tool for finishing any materials. Furthermore, according to one of the proposals, it also may be a sinker for fishnet. The exclusivity of this hoe is that one side is processed well enough. It is convenient for a person's fingers. Something interrupts the master's work. Perhaps there was an attack or some other emergency situation. Nevertheless, it laid here for thousands of years. We will do a traceological analysis and other analysis as well. This grand excavation consists of several dozen squares measuring 4 by 4 meters. Each removed 50 centimeter layer of soil reveals a new horizon, which archaeologists carefully fix. Any objects become full-fledged heroes of the report. The tools that scientists use during excavations are very different, from the oldest tools of the archaeologists, shovels and brushes, to modern ones, which came to science from related or totally unrelated spheres. This device is called a tachymeter. This is a tripod. We shoot stones, ceramics and bones using this tool. We shoot special items separately. The numbers are displayed here. The device which is holding my colleague is a pole. He holds the pole straight and I shoot on the tachymeter. It can also measure the height of stones or mounds. It is more effective and more correct way to measure this way. Ulan Rahmetov is from East Kazakhstan and has been participating in archaeological expeditions for three years. He's a student of the Amanjolov East Kazakhstan University with a specialty in digital humanities. This specialty was supported by the regional governor. Here young people study history, programming and 3D modeling.
tarih degen tarih mamandığı ne özpün? Since childhood, I have been fond of history and historian specialty. I like history a lot. I'm always interested in it. It was this interest that led me to archaeology. I also want to learn how to draw stones and make drawings. Within the time, we will be taught all these things. Now, Ulanse's duties are working with a tachymeter, aerial photography and digital data processing. Do you agree that these bears little resemblance to the stereotypical image of an archaeologist? Birinchi nahotkan tazla bo'ladi, keramikan. Keramikan tazlaydi, yo'q, to'r tazlaydi. Initially, they clean the findings, ceramics and bones. Then we mark the findings. Green and red are bones, yellow are ceramics. We shoot each layer, then collect it. After collecting, we take it to the laboratory where everything is counted, cleaned and displayed at the total amount. Before the bones and ceramics are collected, they are photographed with a scale. We set the scale. The scale is 10 meters. There are many types of scale. We put the scale, take pictures and then I collect it. For example, yesterday on Sector 22, an upper part of a jug of burnt clay was found. I shot this item with a tachymeter, then my colleague wrote it down under the number 484. So the number of the finding will be 484. When I write in the legend, I'll write picket 484. After fixation, each finding is separated in a separate zip bag, signed and sent to the laboratory. Чтобы повернуть время вспять, нужно взять в руки предмет, доказательство минувших эпох. To turn back time, you need to pick up an object, proof of bygone epochs, which will tell us who, what, why and when this tool was made. Researcher using several objects will tell us about the whole period. And here, a piece of a pot, bones, a grain grinder, a hoe turned into a priceless treasure. A few years ago, it was difficult to imagine that a full-fledged scientific office could appear in the middle of excavations. Previously, in the field, scientists were engaged only in collecting information and findings, while the analysis and research took place in scientific centers. Nowadays, more and more often, the archaeologist spends time with the computer. Archaeology is actively developing. We have not only a shovel, a brush, a spatula. Moreover, we have drone photography. And if there is aerial photography, then we make an orthophoto plan accordingly. There are confusions due to the tilt of ground or tilt of camera. The measurements would be inaccurate. Only orthophoto plan could take all these things into consideration and give correct conclusion. It turns out that this photo is equal to the map. There used to be sketches. We had to manually draw every sector, every square and every stone. Nowadays, this process is much easier because after removing one layer, you can use a drone to make photos, shoot with a tachymeter then score points and immediately shoot a complete picture of the excavation. We always see the process of removing the layers from one side, but what was under these layers? Moreover, we can put the previous findings on this orthophoto plan. We were shooting each ceramics and its fragments. In the future, using the AFTOCAD program, it's possible to put exact location of things on the orthophoto plan. This science does not stand still, it constantly develops. It not only digs, it uses the capabilities of different sciences such as physics and chemistry. Additionally, IT technologies are being introduced very strongly now. Maxim Polovtsev is a researcher at the Akmola Regional Museum of History and Local Law. He participates in Samashev's expedition for the first time. He dreamed of being an archaeologist all his life.
Have you romanticized the profession? No. I knew that the basic work would be swinging a shovel and there will be nothing like Indiana Jones romance. I knew that this would be exactly the work. But it will be an interesting work because I will discover something new for myself all the time, every time. All my acquaintances know that I am an archaeologist. They ask me whether I found gold. They strongly believe that we, like dwarfs, are constantly mining for gold. Meanwhile, for a true researcher, the shine of gold should not obscure the main goal. The main purpose is using the material evidence to restore the picture of past time. Based on the items that are stored in the laboratory today, we can declare that Akbaur could look like this during its heyday. There are many traces of ceramics and findings. There are many grain grinders. Probably inhabitants were engaged in agriculture. There is a valley, there is a river. For instance, if there are grain graters and hoes, it means they sowed grain. There are also many bones of large and small animals. And so, what do we have? They hunted, they knew how to weave. We found a spindle, so this means that they made their own clothes. Let's get back to the excavation. Before archaeologists dive into the soil, modern technology gives them the opportunity to see in great detail what is hidden under the soil. It is an electromagnetic scanning device. Do you want to extend the site? Yes, in the future, it is planned to expand the excavation site and we will use electromagnetic sounding in advance. Scientists call this 10 kilogram device the Chupa Chups. The scanner emits an electromagnetic discharge, which returns back. Then the radar shows what is in the soil and how deep it is. This is the principle of operation of this device. For the first time, such devices were used by geologists for the exploration of minerals. The recorded data is processed immediately in the laboratory. In general, here is resistance. We have electromagnetic radar. It emits an impulse and reads the degree of resistance of materials, soil or stone. Now we can see how the color scale is changing. This is a friable soil. Its color is red and yellow. This is the palette we have formed. We can understand that this is the rock, which can be seen visually. We filmed it on Akbaur. Here we see similar structure that means stones as well. Green is not as powerful as on the rocks. There are scattered stones that we could see. This is the site of the settlement. Here is the already dug and disturbed earth. Excavations on Akbaur are continuing for the second year, and each new step suggests new discoveries. The settlement, which probably stretches along the entire foot of the hill. Death and breath are the formula by which researchers plan to work. Will you go deeper? Of course. Our scanning devices show steps up to 7 meters. It's even later. You will go down to the Stone Age. Anything is possible. It will be extremely interesting for us if there is also a lower cultural layer. Then we would have already developed an evolutionary scheme. It is a late bronze and the early nomadic period is on top of it. And the late bronze lies on the middle bronze and that on the early bronze up to the stone age. If it were, it would be generally ideal. Thus, we could use the example of one monument to trace the stratification of cultural development, the so-called cultural genesis throughout the region. 
During 2019 field season alone, almost 1,500 fragments of ceramics were discovered at the Akbaur settlement. Moreover, they also discovered several spindles, which the ancients used in the manufacture of fabric. 2020 brought an equally significant amount of findings, such as stone tools including grain graters and hoes. The remains of bones of large horn and small horn animals are a faunal complex. It is a proof that inhabitants raise livestock. Moreover, they set up special pens for it. All these findings are of great scientific interest. It gives an idea about the paleoeconomics and materials processing technologies of this region. It reveals the aspects of the life of the region's population in the transition period from the Bronze Age and unveils the phenomenon of the early Saka culture. In the next episode of the Beyond Time Project, we will see Rock art of the ancient inhabitants of Akbaur. This square with dots is a very ancient symbol that dates back to the Paleolithic. It is a symbol of fertility and sown field. Circular structure of the early Iron Age. Is this a dwelling or a priestly complex? The mystery of human skulls. It is possible that this is a ritual human sacrifice. This option is also not excluded.